Hello. It's good to be with you again, and it's hard to believe that it's already December, and I'm sure you're thinking about Christmas arriving. Um, yes, last Sunday was the first Sunday of the season that we call Advent. Now, Advent, the word Advent means coming. So, the Sundays before Christmas, we're anticipating the coming of Jesus, the Savior of the world, who came to us as a baby. Last Sunday, if you tuned into church, Lida um, Schrader uh, lit the first candle in the Advent wreath during the church service, and that was the candle of hope. Now, you know what the word hope means. Sometimes you hope for something um, good, or you hope for something big to happen. Well, Christmas is all about bringing us hope because our best hope, the best hope in all the world, is the gift of Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the world, and in him we, have, we can all have hope. Today, during this service, the second candle will be lit, and that's the candle of love. Now, all of you know what love is. Um, you love your parents, you love your siblings, you love your friends, you love your grandparents, aunts, uncles, your pets. Um, it could go on and on. But one of my favorite verses in the Bible is John 3.16. And it talks about real love. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus. <clears throat> he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, shall not die, but shall have everlasting life. Now that's true love. And that's the kind of love that comes to us through Jesus at Christmas time. He loves every one of us, and his love is real. Real love is in Jesus. There's another Bible verse that says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then it also says, And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So there are the two biggest aspects of love. God's love for us, and we can love him back. And then, because we love him, we're able to love others. And that's so important. <clears throat> Today we're going to take a look at the, the Christmas story. And I'm sure it's familiar to you, but in the Bible it's found in two different places. One is in the, in the chapter book, excuse me, of Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament, and another story of the birth of Jesus is found in Luke, which is the third book in the New Testament. Today I'm going to read, and if you have your Bibles, you can help me, um, you can follow along where you are. We're going to look in the book of Luke today and turn to chapter 2. If you have a Spark Bible, it would probably be, mine is on page 1130, 1130. It starts with chapter 2, and there's a heading there that says, The Birth of Jesus. I'm going to read about that, uh, read about the Christmas story, and it will be familiar to you, but today... We're going to be talking and thinking about some of the main characters in the Christmas story. <clears throat> so I'm going to begin with chapter 2. In those days, a decree, which is an order, went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, 
because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among all whom he favors. When the angels had left the shepherds and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So that's the passage of the Christmas story in the book of Luke. Next week we're going to look at um, the story that is in Matthew. But as I said before, we're going to take a look at the characters today. Um, as you think about Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and the angels and the shepherds. And how the shepherds went to see baby Jesus. They were his first visitors. And I want to think you to think about those people and... What do you think it was that made them so special? Actually, there wasn't anything real extraordinary about any of them. God chose to use just ordinary, everyday people in this story. <clears throat> he used everyday people in the Christmas story. Mary, Joseph, and all the other people in our story are ordinary people. They are special because God chooses, because God chose everyday people, just like us, to help bring Jesus into the world. God loved the ordinary people in the Christmas story, and God loves us too, whether we're ordinary, everyday, or special. God chose everyday people to be in the Christmas story. He cho chose everyday people because that is who Jesus came to serve, everyday folks, like all of us. We're ordinary, but we're special because God loves us. And we want to keep remembering that. <clears throat> God loves us too. Today I thought um, I'd just like to share with you, and 
wondering how many of you have a nativity scene in your home that you have put up before Christmas. That's one of my favorite parts of Christmas, and I just thought I'd like to share with you a few of the manger scenes that we've put up in our house. And we're going to look for those ordinary people that Jesus used, that God used to bring Jesus into the world. The first one to start with, as I move around here, <laughs> hopefully you can see this. I'm not so good at this. Okay. This is just a real traditional manger scene. And we have the shepherd with the sheep on his shoulders. And we have the sheep and the cattle. And we have Joseph. Joseph. And Whoa. And Mary. And here's baby Jesus in the manger. And then we didn't talk about them this week. We'll talk more about them next week. But, oops, I'm getting all mixed up here. The manger scene also shows the three wise men. They actually came later in our story, and we'll be reading about them next week and talking about them. But just remember, these were just ordinary people, ordinary animals that, that um, God used. Okay. I'll share a couple of others here. This is one, if you can see that, and actually this was given to me, but it was made in the country of Peru, which is in South, South America, so it's actually made from a gourd, and you open the lid, and inside, once again, because it's in South America, they have cacti, and Mary and Joseph and the baby is tucked down there, if you can see up closely. And we have a shepherd with the sheep, and we have the wise men, we have Mary and Joseph. Once again, someone, else, someone else's interpretation of how they view the nativity. But once again, it has those same ordinary people. Mary, Joseph, the baby Jesus, the angel, the shepherds, and the sheep. Okay. Another um, set that I have. Many, many years ago, I was able to visit my aunt and uncle, who were missionaries in... Africa in the country of Nigeria and I went to visit them and while I was there I was able to buy this carb set made from a kind of wood from a kind of wood that grew in the bush country in Nigeria. Now the people in Nigeria are they're all black. So here's Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus in a manger. You just see his head there. Okay. But, once again, the shepherd came, 
the sheep. Right here is the sheep. And here is the angel. Now these are all hand carved with just very crude um, knives or whatever they had. And over here we have the wise men that came bringing gifts. One, two, and three. And here's the donkey. Maybe that was the donkey that Mary rode on. But remember, the ordinary people, the everyday people that Jesus used. Okay. I have one, well, I have several more, but I'm just going to show you one more. And I have a daughter that lives in Montana, and she lives near the mountains. It's always fun to go visit, and you know that mountains have bears. So this is just kind of a fun set. It's a nativity scene made with bears. So here's a baby bear that represents baby Jesus. Here's Mary, Mary Bear. Here's Joseph Bear. And you notice they're, they're carved bears. Over here we have the three wise men bringing gifts. Once again, three bears. Here's the third one. So there's the three bears. And then over here. He's holding the sheep, but that's one of the shepherds. And back here, you can guess which one this is by the wings. This is the angel. So we can see that many people had a lot of um, different ways of expressing or showing how, how they think of the nativity. But I just want us to remember that, you know, God's made us all special, and he made us all, we may seem to be ordinary people, that's good. God did something really special when he sent Jesus, because he turned all us ordinary people into someone special. So I hope you have a good day today and a good week. Enjoy getting ready for Christmas, and... Next week we'll meet one more time and we're going to visit the, the Christmas story from a different book in the Bible and we'll see what else we can come up with. So you have a great week and um, thanks for listening today. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.